Hello and welcome to our second look through 2 Samuel 6 with the Ark of the Covenant and its removal from the place at Kiriath Jerim, which is named in our text as Bala, uh, to Jerusalem by David in order to demonstrate his desire to both worship God and have the people of God follow the covenant. The reading is going to come up and we're going to come back to look at those couple of verses from verses 3 through 5. 2 Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verse 3 to the end of verse 5. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it. And Ahio was walking in front of it. David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums and cymbals. Now on the surface, it seems everything is going swimmingly. There's celebration, there's festivities, there seems to be planning, and they're taking an object that was obscure into its prominent place. What could go wrong? Well, in fact, everything went wrong. This is a great text that demonstrates to us that sincerity and celebration does not equal truth. On the surface, it's going to seem like that God was quite nasty to Uzzah and Ohio in tomorrow's reading. But hopefully you can tell today that the preparation for why the judgment will come upon them uh, tomorrow's reading actually occurs in today's passage. Now yesterday I mentioned three of the things that were in the Ark of the Covenant that had great symbolic reference points to Israel's history. Namely the budded staff of Aaron, uh, the manna from uh, the wilderness, and of course the Ten Commandments. But one thing we didn't mention uh, comes out in full view today, and that is the law of the prophets, the law of God, the Torah. And that it was absolutely critical because it gave instructions of how God wanted to be worshipped. In other words, God is not worshipped according to pagan deities. God is not worshipped according to how these non-real gods and the rest of the world are worshipped. God is worshipped according to how he wishes to be worshipped because it's both reflective of his glory, and also helpful for us that we worship him in the right way. It is truth. It is also absolutely critical for David to get that right. And a number of things that occur in today's passages will demonstrate that he failed to do so. And he failed to do so because he never took the time or had the energy or the understanding to know where was the law of God? Where is God's word that would have given us an understanding of how we are to worship him, how we are to do things on his behalf? God doesn't need us to do things on his behalf. He does things on our behalf in order for us to worship him. He doesn't need the glory to of us worshiping him to feel good about himself. The glory is something that is within his own character. He is to be worshipped, for he is glorious. That is who he is. And to not treat him as such is actually a lie. And this is what we'll discover in our passage uh, today. In verse 3, you can see straight away, it says, They set the ark of God on a new cart. Now, just earlier in 1 Samuel, and of course, these readings weren't put together until after these events were done. And so we as the reader know, but during history they would not have had this understanding because they haven't taken careful attention of what happened in the past. They've ignored the past and they haven't gone to understand it. So sadly, they're doomed to repeat it. They put the ark on a new cart, which went pear-shaped way back in 1 Samuel 6. And we go, oh no, they put the ark on a new cart. On the surface, it seems, well, who cares what sort of cart they put it on? Well, it's actually not supposed to be put on any type of cart at all because that was representative of pagan deities to carry their idols around on carts and God is saying I am not like them I'm not the best of a bad bunch of non-real gods I am the only God I am to be treated altogether different but sadly David is showing us here that he's treating his God the same as that all the pagan gods were treated within that area of Baal and the town of Baal that we had yesterday in verse 2. So they set the ark on a new cart and bought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, Uzzah and Ahio. Now, obviously, those three were sincere in their worship of God, but they weren't sincere in their truthfulness of worship of God because they didn't know the reality of how they were supposed to treat the ark of God. The ark of God was also supposed to be carried on its poles, not put on this particular uh, object of a new cart. They were supposed to carry it. And they're also supposed to cover it. 
It was not to be carried through towns or carried the six miles or so uh, from Kiriath Jirim over to Bethlehem, or sorry, over to Jerusalem, because it could be mistaken as an idol to be worshipped. It was meant to be covered. It was not meant to be a, a object to worship at. It, it was meant to have within it the testimony of information and the history of God in his relationship with his people. You're supposed to worship God, not the objects by which he gives us to know him. That was not supposed to happen. But there's no hint here of covering at all. There's no hint that they're carrying on a pole. In fact, quite the opposite. Our text continues in verse 4. It had the, with the ark of God on it, on, that's on the actual uh, new cart, and a higher was walking in front of it. Well, again, you can't walk in front of it if you're carrying it. You'll be carrying it in front of it, but not walking just by yourself. David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with castanets. So having this great festival to demonstrate what they are doing. And they are sincere in their praise, sincere in their love, sincere in their worship. But they are just wrong. They are just absolutely wrong. And the sad reality will occur to us tomorrow. But it's a good reflection of us. Sincerity need not equal truth. Absolute passion in worship can be absolute delusion if it is not grounded in the reality of God's word. That is the most critical aspect we have here. What is missing from our passages from yesterday and today? The word of God that would have informed them and would have informed their worship. It would have informed their behavior. And it's exactly what God's word does to us. God's word informs us about the way we worship him and the way that we ourselves must live our lives, our behavior. David could have done that, but he didn't. He worshipped God in the way that the gods of the pagan nations around them worship their gods. And God says, no, that is not how I want to be worshipped because it doesn't lead you into worshipping me in truthfulness and in justice. Sincerity does not equal truthfulness. Passion does not equal correct worship at all. Worship is understanding God's character by his word and by his spirit, having him help us Worship him in justice and truth by his word. It is in his word that we get to know God. And by his word, we understand the revelation he has made to the people of God in the past, the people of God through Christ, and how he'll continue to make himself known in his world. That is how we worship God. We must be passionate, yes. We must be sincere, yes. But it has to be through justice and word-based ministries. If you want to worship God, Read his word. If you want to be passionate about God, know his character and live it out. And this is what this passage demonstrates to us so clearly. Amen.